Hi, I'm Dr. Timothy Harita, and for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about migraine. The first key concept of a migraine is how it presents to you as a provider. There are several patterns to recognize. I like mnemonics, only when I can remember what they stand for, but the one for migraine headaches that seems to work best for me is Sultans. The letters in Sultans stand for a severe, unilateral, throbbing headache, and activity makes it worse. The headache may be associated with nausea, plus or minus vomiting, and or associated with sensitivity to light and or sound, and we call these photophobia and phonophobia. If you have a camera or a phone, feel free to take a picture here to have it handy. I'll pause for just a second. A migraine is often defined as an episodic headache lasting a few hours to a few days. With two of these and one or two of these, you meet criteria for a migraine. Okay, let's put this aside for now. But we'll keep it handy and we'll come back to it. Now the history of our understanding of migraine is pretty fascinating because it's a theme that is repeated in science as our ability to measure, calculate, and image things grows so does our understanding. For a very long time it was generally agreed that migraine was a vascular headache your head throbs in a migraine. Maybe, it was thought, there's too much pressure in the brain or its blood vessels. And there was measurable vasodilation associated with people having migraines. And known vasoconstrictor medications like ergotamine and caffeine gave migraine sufferers relief. So it seemed pretty straightforward. But other medications work for migraine. For instance, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications clearly helped migraine sufferers, but aren't themselves vasoactive. They don't act on the blood vessels. And the aura that some migraineurs experience is also not explained by a simple vascular etiology. But now, with our ability to image not only the brain's structure, but also its function in real time, we understand even more. So the next concept to stick in your brain is this. Cortical spreading depression. As cortical spreading depression starts, there is an electric storm that begins in the area of the brain responsible for vision. Many people who suffer from migraines note visual symptoms, and they can start with bright flashing lights that turn into blind spots, and these can often be in a zigzag formation. This electrical storm spreads forward from the back of the brain, leaving in its wake an area of electrical depression, hence the term cortical spreading depression. It is at this point that a migraine headache is born. This is the part you need to understand here because the symptoms and the treatment are focused right here. Now, if we look deep inside at what's happening at the cellular level, we see neurons that look exhausted in an area called the trigeminal cervical pain system there's the release of several proteins, and these are called vasoactive neuropeptides. They include substance P, calcitonin gene-related peptide, vasoactive intestinal peptide, among others. These proteins cause an inflammatory state. There's increased pain transmission, vasodilation, increased blood flow, and throbbing. Remember the T in sultans. Now that you understand what happens with a migraine, it'll make a lot more sense how we treat them. Pharmacologic treatment to abort a migraine is broken down into three main areas. There are the anti-inflammatory medications, a newer class of medications called the triptans, and the medicines that we use to treat nausea and vomiting called the anti-emetics. The anti-inflammatories are a class of medications 
that block inflammation through blocking the enzymes that cause inflammation. Remember those vasoactive neuropeptides? Anti-inflammatory medicines combat this process. So we're quelling the inflammation and treating the pain. There are a lot of these to choose from. And they're broken down into different classes and some seem to work better depending on the situation and depending on the patient. The next class of medications is very interesting. This new class of medications called the triptans because of their names. This was a breakthrough in that the migraine was targeted at the brain receptor level, specifically the serotonin receptors, 1B and 1D. These cause vasoconstriction, inhibition of the vasoactive neuropeptides, and inhibition of pain. Antiemetics. Nausea and vomiting are a common feature in migraine. There are four horsemen of the nausea and vomiting zombie apocalypse that act in two separate zones. These are worth memorizing. They are dopamine and serotonin, and histamine and acetylcholine. This latter group of antihistamines and anticholinergics are cheaper, some are older, but still an option. Hydroxyzine is sometimes given as an injectable for migraines. Of course, the newer medications, those that specifically block serotonin receptors, are the most expensive. They include ondansetron, dolasteron, and granisetron. So now using your understanding of how to recognize migraine, what mechanisms create it, and how to treat it, you can use these now as a foundation to learn about other headache types. And it'll be a lot easier to appreciate their differences. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.